What's going on everybody? This is Curtis. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking once again about PavMed. Now I know I spoke about them in my last video, but that was just commentary on the IPO. This video is going to be everything I want to talk about in the last video, but didn't because of the news about the IPO. So in this video we're going to go through all the recent updates about the company that they've had since my previous PathMed update video, which is about three or so months ago. So it's quite a bit to cover actually, so let's get into that right now. Major announcement number one is the acquisition of Oncodisc Inc. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but you'll see the picture here. And with this acquisition, PathMed actually created a subsidiary called Varus Health. This technology is the first intelligent implantable vascular access port with biologic sensors and wireless communication, combined with an oncologist designed remote digital health platform that provides patients and physicians with a new tool to improve outcomes and optimize delivery of cost-effective care through remote monitoring and data analysis. According to Dr. Acklog, the CEO of PavMed, this represents about a two to three billion dollar market opportunity for the company. Varus is targeting to have FDA 510 clearance on an intelligent implantable vascular access port and in partnership with LOCA, launch a remote digital healthcare platform in the second half of 2022. Additionally, there's a conference at the end of October called Varus Health, bringing digital health to cancer care. I plan to attend virtually and I'm excited to learn more about the subsidiary. The second major announcement is Tim Baxter joining the board of directors of PathMed. This is notable because Mr. Baxter's most recent experience was as president and CEO of Samsung Electronics North America. While he's currently a board member, independent director, or advisor to nine different companies, this is still great news as a person of this caliber and background would join the board of directors of a company that's not even worth a billion dollars when he was recently running a company that had over a billion dollars of revenue each year. To me, this speaks to the potential of PavMed and PavMed's leadership's ability to convince others of its future potential. The third major announcement is the partnership with telemedicine company Upscript. Upscript will support Lucid's upcoming EsoGuard telemedicine program by providing a Lucid branded web-based telemedicine platform for patients with chronic heartburn symptoms to request video evaluations by a physician and, if clinically indicated, referral to Lucid's EsoGuard esophageal DNA test. This program will initially start in Arizona and will eventually roll out nationwide. This is a great step for the company and an excellent way for them to expand their customer awareness and get the products to the patients that need the test most. On the similar note, the next major announcement was that as of August 10th, the company has started accepting patients in their Phoenix facilities. This is a major step forward in what's now Lucid's growth strategy. And to add what I noted in my last video about the future potential revenue outcomes of these facilities, PathMed on the last quarterly earnings report actually released what their approximate numbers would be on the cost and the revenue side potential for these facilities. On the cost side, according to the company, they only need to perform about 1.7 tests per week to break even. The fairly low costs associated with these clinics should allow them to scale pretty quickly once they find that winning formula. Additionally, on the revenue side, if they hit the max test per week of 20, that would mean that each facility would generate about $2.6 million revenue a quarter, and that's about $10 million annually. With three facilities in just Phoenix and more on the way to other cities, this should mean that Lucid is on its way to seeing significant revenue growth over the next few years as these facilities are set up. And keep in mind that this is not their only go-to-market strategy as well. They are also continuing to educate doctors to get them in the hands of those that speak directly with the patients right now. And finally, we get back to the Lucid IPO. While the price action of both Lucid and Pavin was not ideal for investors, it's important to look at why management decided to IPO now instead of waiting a quarter or two for revenue to start coming into what is now Lucid. My mentality is to always assume people make educated, smart decisions in their best interest. So with that in mind, I think we should look at what management did and try to figure out why they made this decision instead of just saying it was an incorrect decision. Try to figure out from their perspective, why now? Why not wait till later on when they actually have revenue coming in? First of all, management knows way, way, way more than we do. I know this point's pretty obvious, but there's plenty of people on Twitter and Stocktwits that seem to think that management has no idea what they're doing. The second point is that with any IPO that's not a direct listing, it is designed to do one thing, get cold hard cash in the business. To do one thing, accelerate growth. So taking these two points into account, my best guess here is that management made a calculation and decided that they'd rather have the money now versus potentially a little bit more money in the future. To do one thing, again, accelerate the growth strategy. From the IPO, they received about $70 million, and PavMed stated that they're gonna use this money to jumpstart marketing, increase their sales team, and launch their clinics around the West Coast. 
So again, as I mentioned in my last video, nothing's really changed about the company outlook since the IPO. In fact, quite the opposite. They now have a ton of cash to help them push forward with their growth strategy and get to market that much faster than, they would work, than what they were gonna do if they had an IPO and got all this money. So with all this cash, I think it's only gonna help them out in the next quarters and years. That is my time horizon for purchasing stocks. You probably have a different investing strategy than I do, and I'm not your financial advisor, so don't take advice from some random guy on YouTube, but this is my perspective on the stock, and I'm pretty excited about the future. Well, that's it for this week. If I missed anything, or you wanna add to the conversation, please leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see y'all next time.